please give a warm San Francisco TEDx welcome to Charles Huang. There, there are many things that uh, I'm very proud of in having created the Guitar Hero franchise with uh, my brother Kai. Uh, Tim mentioned some of them. We were the fastest video game to reach a billion dollars in sales. Uh, we even had our own South Park episode made after Guitar Hero, which some of you may have seen. Yes, called Guitar Queer. If you haven't seen it, you should take a look at it. It is hilarious. Uh, but one of my fondest moments, actually, is that um, Guitar Hero helped to reunite the Sex Pistols. And for those of you who don't know who the Sex Pistols are, they're a seminal 60s rock band that brought the world punk music, punk rock. And for those of you who do know the Sex Pistols, you're probably wondering, what is he talking about, right? The, the Sex Pistols, I mean, for, for Christ's sakes, you know, Sid Vicious is dead. <laughs> so um, rather than me telling you this part of the story, I'm going to let a, uh, a brief interview with the Sex Pistols uh, themselves telling you how they were reunited by Guitar Hero. So if we could please cue up the video of the Sex Pistols. <laughs> you corny sods. My favourite guitar is a white custom Les Paul. Like that, you mean? Don't be shy about us. We're not. Well, I am an guitar hero. It's a new one for us to be now combined up with a video game, but this guitar hero ain't so bad after all. I like it because uh, my friend's kids like it, and I like what kids like. The idea of doing this for a game is quite right, because I'm not very pretty, I'm certainly not vacant, and a bit of anarchy in a video game is all right by me. Guitar Hero actually wanted to use the Sex Pistols because we've lost our masters. Our record company has no idea where the masters are. Someone's got them or sold them or stolen them or whatever. Such is the legend of the Sex Pistols. So it was great for Guitar Hero to in a way, get us back in the studio. It's just the threesome, me, Steve and Paul, which is how we recorded No Minor Bollocks in the first place. Which a lot of people don't know is I played the bass on Never Mind the Bollocks originally. Great guitar hero, Steve Jones. Yes, he is. Glenn had left the band at that point, or he was kicked out, whatever way you want to look at it. And Sid was in a hospital with hepatitis, so he couldn't really play. Not that he could play anyway. Re-recording them, what a stress you put on us. But we rose to the occasion, I think, admirably. I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out, but it actually turned out great and everyone held their own. So we're the best of the bunch. I like it, that's all I can tell you. I bloody well like this game and I normally don't. Well, I like a lot of video games, but this one I really like. So you see, I wasn't just kidding when I said Guitar Hero reunited the Sex Pistols. But what a lot of people don't know was that uh, this almost never came about. So uh, I'd like to come today and tell you a story about uh, how we basically made Guitar Hero. So early in, in, in our company, Red Octane's history, uh, my brother and I and, and a core group of people in the company, we discovered music games that were wildly popular in Asia. I mean, we loved music games. We, we played music games at work. We stayed after work to play music games, and then we went home and played more music games. And, and, you know, we believed in our hearts that someday, even though the, the genre wasn't very popular in the U.S., that someday other Americans would enjoy playing music games as much as we did. So we set out to answer the question, how do we popularize music games here in the West? And... We tried a variety of different things. We put uh, English songs in the games. We made better products. We made great hardware. Uh, we made a great dance pad that was the best-selling dance pad in the US. We made a, gr a great dance game called In the Groove. We toiled at it for three or four years. And, and ultimately, in early 2005, we started collaborating with a company called Harmonix on a guitar game. And when we started, we had one breakthrough idea for the guitar game. And um, uh, that, that breakthrough idea was this. I'll just uh, show you real quick. So our, our breakthrough idea was that if we were going to make a guitar game, it should be about everything 
that is rock and roll. And um, I'm going to digress one minute here and, and tell you how this came about. Is I was originally going to put music as the background prop for, for this talk. And then I realized this was getting webcasted. And uh, I thought, well, you know, then I have to get music licensing involved. And, or else we might get sued by the music industry again because we've been sued by, by many different parties. And so after discussing it with some of the organizers, I thought ah, it's probably just better to, uh, to, to leave out the music and, and hence you get, uh, you get this. <laughs> so, so back to the, the story. Um, we were making this game Guitar Hero and it was going real well. And then in the summer, my brother and I had to go and do two things. Um, the first was that we had to go sell the game to uh, retail buyers. And then the second was we had to go out and find investors to help us fund the launch of the game. And so, you know, we put on our, our, our clean shirts and, and our nicest shoes. And, and I hit just about every retail buyer, uh, every major retailer in, that, in the country in that summer. And the results were uh, surprisingly disappointing, actually. I remember being at one meeting where this, this buyer, uh, he was a young guy who, he actually played guitar in a band, local band, and I thought if anybody was going to get it, this guy was going to get it. And, and so we demoed the game, he played the game, and then afterwards he turned to one of his colleagues and said, I think it's too kitschy, I don't think it's going to work. Then we went to uh, another buyer who, who told us, he was in this sort of very authoritative voice, he said, our sales research shows us that Americans don't buy music games. And, and it went on and on like that the whole summer. And so as a result, by the time Guitar Hero launched, I think we only had three retailers uh, in, in the United States that actually committed to taking the product. Uh, at the same time, we were going through to find uh, investors. And those meetings were going even worse than the retail <laughs> buyer meetings. Uh, I, you know, we, at one meeting, we had an investor. We showed him the game, talked about our company. He played the game. He actually loved it. And then he said, that is a great game. And too bad you guys are going to go out of business trying to sell it. And then the, the most hilarious was, was uh, one uh, potential investor told me years later, he said that uh, uh, you know, we had done our presentation, talked about our company, uh, showed the game. And he basically sum, summed up the opportunity this way. He said, you guys were two random brothers with a plastic guitar. That was the end of the conversation. <laughs> and so we literally didn't get uh, any funding to help us launch uh, Guitar Hero. And um, I'm going to need some help from maybe if you can put the next slide to show you the source for uh, Guitar Hero funding. So this here is a picture of me with my wife Lillian, my oldest daughter Kaylin, and my youngest daughter Charlotte. Essentially what happened was I went home one day and uh, talked to my wife. I said, I said, Lillian, I think we should take out a second mortgage on our house so we could pay for the launch of this game. And my wife literally looked at me and said, well, where are the kids going to live if this game doesn't sell? And the best answer I had was, well, I think the game's going to sell. <laughs> <laughs> and luckily, I have a very supportive wife. <laughs> And so we entered this uh, crazy phase of the company, my brother and I, where we took out second mortgages on our houses. We borrowed all the money we could on credit cards. We borrowed money from you know, any friends and family that were willing to lend us money. And, um, and, and for this phase of the company, we were like Bon Jovi. We were living on a prayer. <laughs> and so that's how we launched Guitar Hero, and luckily, as soon as we shipped the game, it started to sell out everywhere. And I say luckily because that was very lucky for me and my marriage. <laughs> um, and so I like to take the story kind of full circle, if you, uh, if you will. Uh, the lesson here was that if my wife wasn't willing to let me basically put our family and our kids at risk of being homeless, there's a chance that Guitar Hero may never have made it to market. And if that had happened, there's a chance that the Sex Pistols might never have been reunited. <laughs> and just think about that. All of you here would have been denied the music and the antics of Johnny Rotten. And that would have been tragic. And so I, I came today to, to sort of tell this story because I think uh, there's, there's many people, Tedsters, are out to 
disrupt the world for the sake of innovation and progress. And I think, you know, for many of you, I don't know where your journeys will take you. Um, you may come to a point in your journey where you have to face a decision like I did. And if you do, I hope that in some way that my story helps you to push on. Because I don't know whether you'll find success and rewards on your journey. But what I believe is that the world has more innovation and more progress when there are people that are willing to risk everything on something that they deeply and passionately believe in, even if that something is as crazy as a plastic guitar. So for all of you who are out there on that journey, just remember that your version of the Sex Pistols are out there waiting for you. Thank you. Thank you.